Hi, I'm ready to film. I can already tell that one of the hardest things about returning for me is gonna be getting comfortable in front of the camera again because so far, every time I come to film, I get completely ready and then I sit down and my mind goes blank. It just goes empty in here and no thoughts return until I come to the conclusion that I am not filming and then all of a sudden it's like I now remember what I wanted to talk about. And it's not because I'm lacking ideas. I actually have like 10 folders of ideas, just so many notes of different video ideas and I could still do all of them. They would all work perfectly fine just for me to sit down and film but uh no I actually finally did get a good microphone for filming but I'm not using it right now last time I tried to set up a microphone and use it it went really really bad I ended up having to film the same video four times just to get the audio in there and I only have a tiny bit of time today to film so I really want to get this video done and I want it to be done right the first time so I don't have to do it all over again. So I'm just using the really gross, disgusting in-camera microphone. Please forgive me. I've done this always though and no one's ever complained even though it's disgusting. How dare none of you guys get after me sooner? How come like back in 2017 no one was yelling at me for using the in-camera microphone? As a content creator I feel like that's like the third thing you should upgrade. Like first you get a nicer camera, then you get some better lighting, and then you fix your microphone. But I never did. Ever. So I guess you guys really do expect the bare minimum from me. You expect below that. I mean, I haven't uploaded barely anything in years, so I get it. I do. Um, I really do feel so much better this year. I feel more like I'm my own person again. I actually feel inspired to work again. I'm enjoying my life. I'm getting out of bed every single day. I'm leaving my house every day. I'm doing things, so I feel like finally, finally, finally I can incorporate filming into my life. <gasps> so that's what we're doing today. Yay! I do want to correct something I said in my last video. In my last video, I stated that I think that I'm going to be venturing away from doing just animal content strictly and that I was going to explore different kind of content and that I still would do animal updates and stuff like that and show my animals, but it wouldn't be as often. I'm going back on that. Forget that I said that. Yes, I still do want to do different kinds of content. I still want to try new things. I want to show different sides of me other than just the animals. But now that I'm actually feeling more like myself again and now that my mental health is getting so much better, I'm enjoying working with my animals again. It's, you know, I never, I never stopped taking care of them. I never stopped wanting to take care of them. If I did, I would have rehomed them, right? But I lost the desire completely to talk about it and to dive more into the hobby and be enthusiastic about it. I just loved my animals and wanted to take care of them and I wanted to continue to be able to have them. But that desire to share it with people and that desire to uh, make it like more of a hobby went away. And it was gone for so many years because I just, I mean, I hated myself. You know, little, little quirky stuff. Just a little cute quirky stuff. I really am enjoying the hobby again and I'm having a lot of fun with it and I really am excited to share it with people again. So I'm still gonna talk about animals, okay? So this video is gonna be kind of going back into that. This one's gonna be a pretty short video. It's not gonna be very in depth because it's kind of a simple topic. So if you're someone who takes care of snakes, like I do, you might get the question asked a lot. Oh my God, do they bite? Oh my God, how often do you get bit? Oh my God, you have snakes? How often do they bite you? Do you like get bit? I could not do that. They must bite a lot. Now don't get me wrong. I don't think the question really is a problem. I get it. Most people grow up and learn to stay away from snakes, that they bite, that they're dangerous. And for someone who doesn't take care of and work with snakes, it's understandable that that would be the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh my gosh, how do you deal with them biting? But the important thing that people need to understand is that snakes are not defensive animals. I said that wrong. Yes, they are. What people need to understand is that snakes are actually not aggressive animals. They aren't the kind of animal that will see you and recognize you as a prey or recognize you as something to attack and go straight at you to seek out a fight. They're not gonna be aggressive like that. They are not gonna antagonize you for no reason. Snakes are defensive animals, which means they don't attack and unless they feel they have to. It's really their last resort. They don't want to attack. That's when they feel like they have no other option to. That's why you'll often see some species of snakes do anything else but bite until they absolutely have to. For example, let's use a species that's actually pretty well known to be aggressive, which it really isn't. And that's the water moccasin, or more popularly known as the cotton mouth. Now, cotton mouths are semi-aquatic snakes, and they will live in bodies of water like swamps and rivers. There was a specific river growing up that we had a lot of family reunions at, and my mom and my family members were always worried and warning us to look out for water moccasins, saying that they are waiting and they will attack you and stay out of the water, don't go in these areas, blah blah blah. Now, while I am not at all recommending just to go up and pet a water moccasin, because they do deliver the most 
painful bite. They are a type of viper. The only thing that I'm trying to make clear is they are actually not sitting and waiting to attack you. And actually, rather than that, the reason that their name is the cotton mouth is the fact that their natural defense is to open their mouth very wide and they have this very bright white mouth. So cotton mouth. When startled, when scared, when backed into a corner, they will freeze and open their mouth really big. This is to look bigger. This is to make themselves look scary. This is to warn you, look, I can bite you, <laughs> stay away. But they would prefer not to. They want you just to leave them alone. Most of the times they only will attack if you are in their space and they feel threatened. If it's a, if it's a mother who's gravid or laid eggs and is protective of her area, if, if you're swimming and you stumble upon their territory, they typically will only go after you if they are threatened. They don't get any joy out of attacking. Besides, a snake biting you can lead to them losing their teeth, them getting hurt, them hurting their mouth. They're not wanting to do that. In fact, a lot of the things that people take as a snake trying to attack them is them actually doing false strikes, which is just supposed to be them scaring you, letting them know that they can attack you. They'll lunge towards you, they'll hiss, they'll snap their mouth, and it's just supposed to be this intimidation method to let you know that they could bite you or to make you think that they're trying to bite you to get you to leave. But they're not wanting to bite you. <laughs> so with that out of the way, if you're someone who wonders, hey, if you own snakes, how often do they bite you? For me, at least, the answer is incredibly rarely. There's gonna be some snakes that are way more defensive than other snakes. It, of course, matters what species you're working with. But the point is, in general, they're not these biting, attacking machines. For example, with Maui here, I could pretty much do anything with him and he is not gonna bite me. His defense as a ball python made out of pure muscle is going to be to roll into a ball and hide his head. Of course, that's not to say that ball pythons don't bite. I have one, for example, that is probably the only snake that bites me on a more regular basis. So I'm inside Chip's enclosure right now, which is one of my ball pythons. And this guy has a neurological disorder where he cannot see very well. <laughs> he has problems navigating properly. He has a kind of, his head wobbles back and forth. And because of that, he misses his food more often when striking at it. And he's more likely to just bite me in general because he's a lot more defensive because of the fact that he already has compromised sight. He's already in a more defensive position. It looks like he is go about to go through his shed right now. So that's why his eyes might look a little blue in the camera, but he already has a this much more nervous demeanor about him compared to my other ball pythons whose heads are much more relaxed and low to the ground. His is still sitting above him. He is also just curled up, so that's always gonna be a thing, but you can see as he's moving around, he's keeping his head pointed up a little bit. He's ready to recoil really quick back into his little ball, and he's also ready to be more defensive, and that's why he's moving very slowly as he navigates. They are very careful with everything they do. Now he's speeding up because he's getting a little more confident. <laughs> ball pythons in general aren't fast moving by any means. You could just tell that there is a nervousness to him. His head is wobbling back and forth, but that is because of his neurological disorder. That's not part of it. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys the demeanor of a more nervous ball python. As you could see, his head is pointed up still. It's hovering off the ground. He definitely would strike at me if I antagonized him right now. But I'm gonna leave him alone because I love him and I'm not here to bother him too much. I'm gonna put his little thing back down and I'm gonna go get him some water and leave him alone. He actually is trying to bite me, I can tell. You can tell he's all coiled up. I need to get the water bowl from him to fill it up but he is actually protecting it right now. Uh, you can see his head is pulled back. He's in that little zigzag shape. Their tails are a lot less obvious than other snakes in my opinion because like with colubrids, they'll sit straight up. He is more low to the ground and snakes naturally have a kind of zigzag shape to their body anyway. So I don't want to insinuate just because their body is curled like this that they are going to bite you. That's not the case, but he is just much more still. His head is pointed right towards me. He's hovering. He wants me to go away right now, which is fine. He's gonna get his wish. I'm gonna keep putting his stuff away. I don't want to mess with him any bit right now. I'm actually gonna make a separate video about how to handle snakes that are more defensive like this and how to work around snakes that might be a little more nippy and all that kind of stuff. I can get his bowl once he leaves. He's going through a shed right now. I don't want to bother him, so I'm gonna wait for him to slither away before I get his bowl. <laughs> I don't want to antagonize him right now, but you guys get the idea. You see how still he is this whole time. He is watching all my motions. Right now he's staring forward, but as I start moving with this thing, he'll look sideways. Yeah, see? It's very slow, too. He's watching all my movements. He's not just relaxed and looking around and enjoying himself. He is making sure that I'm not gonna be a threat to him. So that's kind of the more of the behavior you'll find from a python who isn't comfortable with you. I've actually gone a whole year before without being bit once while working with my snakes, and I have over 10 of them. It's really easy to avoid when you know their signs. Now, that doesn't mean that the whole year went by without any of them trying to bite me. Um, I have a green tree python who is definitely more prone to being defensive. If I get 
into his territory, he will strike at me. He is definitely way more defensive. But snakes do have tells and you generally can know when they are preparing to bite. And if you recognize these behaviors, you can much better avoid being bit. But like I said, with Maui here, I could pretty much do anything and he won't bite me. He's only bitten me, I think twice. Don't quote me on that, it could have been three times. But those times were complete accidents. I use tongs to feed them their meals. And sometimes when he goes to strike at the prey, he will miss and he'll end up getting my hand. Like I said, that's only happened two, maybe three times. And he lets go right away. He does not linger on me. The second he notices he did not get the rat and he indeed got my hand, he lets go. And I like to think his shocked frozen body after biting me is him feeling sorry about it and apologizing in his little snake brain. Now here's a much bigger snake. This is Duck. You guys might remember her from when she was tiny. She is a Sumatran short tail python. <laughs> What are you doing? When she gets older, she will go through a slight color change where she will get darker. How dark she gets really just all depends on her genetics. What do you gotta say, duck? She's not so tiny anymore. Now she's a short tail python. Now short tail pythons tend to be a little more temperamental than, than you might say other snakes are. <laughs> she's She's got a hold of my pants right there and I can't get her off. She's pure muscle, so she's stronger than me by just a little. <laughs> These guys tend to be a little more temperamental than other snakes. All snakes do have tells when they're gonna strike. Colubrids, for example, will, will kind of get in this stance, kind of like a zigzag, but they're staying straight up and their little tail will rattle because they think that they're a tough little rattlesnake. But even ball pythons and stuff tend to like power up a little bit before they strike. You can normally tell that they're not happy with you. They get very still, they get very stiff. They perk their head back a little so they get a better view before they strike so they can aim better. And when that's happening, you can know that they're starting to get ready to potentially bite. What's important though is even if you have a snake that's like that if you work with them they tend to get a lot better there's some species that are always going to be more defensive than other species more prone to biting more often but again it's not because they are mean and angry and want to attack you i'm just going to keep drilling that in your head okay these guys don't want to attack they don't want to attack when she's angry by the way which she she's a little bit right now she'll hiss a lot which she's she's doing a little bit of it right now she'll hiss before she bites she'll be like hey look i'm tough huff 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 hiss 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 i'm big and scary so when she hisses her body will get a little bigger it'll puff in and out it'll show that it's like really big and she's really scary and if I ignore it and I'm like your name is duck you're not that scary she could bite <laughs> that's only if I continue to antagonize her if I leave her alone she's not gonna just come chasing after me another thing people do confuse with snakes trying to attack them in the wild is that snakes feel exposed when they are in a defensive situation when they feel like you are coming to attack when they feel like they're exposed to predators including you they will get scared and they will run to the first place of cover. They will look for cover, they'll look to hide because that's in the wild. She's going all over. I don't know what she's doing. Getting wrapped in these wires. I need to unplug them now. There we go. I unplugged it for you. They'll look for cover. That's what she was just doing, for example. She was trying to get behind the blanket. That's where she was going. So if they can't find cover nearby, they'll go for underneath you. You have your, your cover. <laughs> You're bigger than them. Your cover. So they'll go for you. They'll go between your legs. So people will think that that's them attacking. It's not. That's them looking for somewhere to hide. And they see your body as a place to hide. And it can be confusing in those situations because at the same time, they do want to defend themselves from you. So if you're reacting while they're looking for comfort, she doesn't like that I'm moving my hands a lot. If you are reacting while they're looking for cover, they might also start false striking at you or full out end up biting you. But they are not chasing at you. They're not charging towards you. It's often misunderstood that way. She's just not in the mood right now, so I'm gonna go put her away. But I guess that concludes this video. Thank you guys for sticking around all this time. I've been saying that in the last few videos because they've just been so... They've been basically like every year. <laughs> it's like a pop-up video. Yeah, I have a bunch of content coming for you guys and I'm really excited. I I'm not gonna start saying there's any schedule to it yet or anything. It's and keep just kind of coming out gradually but we're gonna work our way back to a consistent uploading schedule so really excited for that and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye